Good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, April 26, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes as 7 p.m. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances when deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of the debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors and staff and our delegate tonight who will participate in this meeting. At this time, as always, I invite your decor. I, uh, just, a quick, just a few quick notes. Uh, last Friday, I had the opportunity to join a, a phone call for heads of council with Premier Ford, uh, Ministers Elliott, Clark, and McNaughton and Jones, and um, they discussed with us the current provincial status with regards to uh, the COVID vaccination and shutdown matters and, and uh, took questions. I, I think the highlight of that meeting was uh, the Premier's um, indication that uh, the province expects that 40% uh, of the population will be vaccinated with at least one dose by April 30th and 65% will be vaccinated by May 30th. So there's a pretty significant progress occurring with regards to the provincial vaccination program. And uh, the government did want us to, uh, to know that and to share as appropriate. Um, I can, I'm also pleased to report that I received my vaccine uh, last uh, Thursday. There were some photographs, I believe, on our social media channel and um, I, did not have any untoward effects. I was quite pleased with the experience. It was quite efficient. It's also my pleasure at this time to point out that a member of our council has uh, uh, officially become a senior citizen. Um, uh, Terry Seiler, Councillor Terry Seiler, turned 65 uh, yesterday. And uh, so I uh, take the opportunity to congratulate him on uh, reaching this milestone. Um, I assume it's a milestone of wisdom, as I told him personally, 65 is the new 45, so he's got lots of years to continue to contribute to our community in whatever fashion he chooses to. Uh, Terry, happy birthday, many happy returns. And let us move to item 2.1 on our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. Okay, so we're not, we're not doing well with sound tonight, apparently. We're gonna make an adjustment and go back to our traditional approach. Uh, just bear with us for a moment. Okay. So hopefully that will change here. Hopefully that resolves some of the sound problems. I'm, uh, can does someone from council nod? Councillor Richardson, would you nod for me? Okay, is that better? Good, all right. Well, and we'll proceed with that. We were testing uh, for the benefit of council and those watching the recording and the stream, uh, we were testing uh, some additional visual uh, prowess in our chamber. It seems like there might be some more testing required uh, in the in near future. We're not there yet, it seems. So uh, let us move then to item 2.1 on our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite any councillor who perceives they have a pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should any 
potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare an act in the meeting. Councillors, are any of you making a, a declaration tonight? Okay, we're not seeing any indication of that, so uh, we will forge ahead. To explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that will be put before us tonight. I will do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, uh, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies web chat function. The clerk is assisting me in maintaining a speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you're not audible, I will let you know and make sure that we hear from you. Uh, we further ask that you maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our voting technology, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute answer yes or no on the motion, then return to mute. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda, the clerk has advised of a proposed agenda change and I'd like to call on her for an explanation. Just give me a moment to set up the AV here. Council tonight, I'm recommending that we remove item number 5.2.1 under the clerk. That's dealing with the consent to sever based on new information that came um, into light today for the North Perth planner. We are going to remove this item from your agenda. Thanks, Clerk Perfels. So I do have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda, which reads as follows that the agenda for tonight's meeting as amended be approved. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion, Mayor Kaysenberg. Thank you. Councillor Anstett, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any discussion or debate on this matter? Seeing none, let's have that vote. My vote's not coming up, Mayor Kaysenberg, but I support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Andreessen in the favor, and there's one more. Councilor Rothwell, uh, my vote didn't come up either. I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you. So with Councilor Rothwell's vote, that's carried. Thank you. Um, that brings us to item number three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they're believed to be non-contentious, yet they do warrant Council's a recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are four items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion, consideration, or action? Okay, so Councillor Rothwell has indicated item 3.4. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, 3.3. All right. Um, why don't we consider both of those at this point before we turn to the resolution, and then we can decide whether there's something that we need to do. So, um, Councillor Rothwell, you have the floor. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd, and uh, members of Council. I just want to... Uh... Uh, not pull this item, just uh, specifically to underline the importance of the uh, Blue Water Recycling's uh, Association's uh, work in the annual report. Uh, this is provided to all members uh, here. And in particular, I want to point out the uh, significant investment that's been made to install uh, six uh, ro uh, robots, artificial uh, intelligence uh, 
This is six additional uh, robots under the uh, materials uh, recovery facility. Uh, and they are uh, still in the process of learning their job. They're doing a fairly good uh, 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 process on that right now. And uh, we are uh, looking for a full implementation by summertime. That's a significant investment that's going to help us in the long term in terms of uh, uh, processing of uh, our uh, recyclables uh, in particular. And so they're the cleanest uh, possible and get the uh, best price as well as to uh, address our labor shortage issues that we've been encountering over the last while. So that's the only thing I just wanted to raise in particular. And if there's any questions that members of council have, I could certainly address them. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. Um, next up then is Councillor Andreessen with item 3.3. Hi, thank you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. Um, the reason why I'm um, just pulling 3.3 is for some consideration around what the City of Cambridge is requesting. They are requesting different councils across the province to advocate to the province about um, um, really instituting a form of paid sick leave, especially given the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic and there are families who um, need to have some paid sick leave in order to stay home and not reinfect others in the workplace and also to support sick loved ones. So um, just a, a thought around pulling that and um, doing some advocacy with the province. Thank you. Thank you. So is it your intent to uh, have us consider a motion to support the resolution from the city of Cambridge, uh, Councillor Andreessen? That was my thinking at this time. Thank you. Okay. So um, why don't we um, why don't we consider that as a second resolution? We can probably proceed with the consent agenda as as proposed, and then uh, I'll call on you, Councillor Andreessen, for the, the next matter um, with regards to that to support request. All right. So. Uh, any other um, polls from the consent agenda, uh, Clerk Berfels, that you're seeing before we consider that resolution? Uh, let's uh, consider this resolution then that the council, um, uh, sorry, that consent items 3.1 to 3.4 be received for information and the minutes of the April 19th, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted. Councillor Parents, can I call on you to be our mover for that? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as seconder? Uh, yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Um, any discussion or debate on this matter? Okay, uh, then let's have that vote. Todd, I'm in favor. My vote didn't come up. Thank you. I have to restart. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. So with that, that's carried. Thank you. Now, Councillor Andreessen, did you have wording or do you want us to sort of just create the wording that this council uh, supports the letter from the City of Cambridge uh, related to um, paid sick leave, paid sick days, and uh, that further we... Um, send that uh, letter to the MPP, other municipalities in Ontario, uh, MP Nader for information, et cetera. Does that sort of suit your intent? Yes, that was my intent. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so, uh, Councillor Andreessen, you'll be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum, would you serve as second mayor? Yes, I'll second that motion, Mayor Todd. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Councillor Seiler, are you looking to yes. join? Yes, I'm Just just wondering, on. is this for essential workers only? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, Clerk Barefaults is going to reference the Cambridge letter, I think. The 
It's not specifying that from what Clerk Fairfield can see. Just to clarify that, it does say all workers, all Ontario workers, um, okay. it, right in the letter. So. Okay, so there we go. That's the clarification. Thank you. Any further questions, comments, debate? Anything like that? We have this duly moved and seconded. We're not seeing any uh, further action from council. So let's have that vote. I'm in favor, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. So with that vote, that's unanimous. Thank you, that's carried. All right, um, let's move on then. Uh, at this time, that brings us to uh, agenda item number four. While we don't have any public meetings tonight, we do have a delegation and a, a pleasure to have this delegation with us. Uh, please welcome from the County of Perth, Mr. Gary White, who is the GIS coordinator at the county. Uh, he will update this council on the GS, GIS platform and framework that's used in Perth County, including how our municipality benefits from this county provided service and perhaps some plans ahead. Mr. White, nice to have you. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and uh, members of council. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Uh, I can't see. Am I on video right now? <laughs> uh, we, ha we have the, the Brady Bunch view right now. but I see. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll uh, as long as you can hear me, I will continue. I'm going to uh, proceed to share my screen. I uh, apologize. It seems to be. There we go. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. It's a uh, PowerPoint um, slide for Perth County. Yes, I could confirm that it's uh, displaying now. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, well, once again, thank you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg and uh, member of, members of council. I'm pleased to be here tonight to provide you a demonstration of the County of Perth's current uh, web GIS service that's available. Um, just a brief background, um, the, the program history. Uh, so in 2006, a uh, study was done with uh, RJ Burnside and they looked at uh, the GIS needs of the County of Perth. And one of the things that did come out with, uh, from that was the need for uh, web GIS to make information uh, publicly available and uh, consumable. Uh, so from 2006 to 2009, uh, the web GI a new web GIS system was built and launched to provide global access uh, to the GIS data. In 2018, um, the system was migrated from the uh, software called OnPoint to a newer uh, system called GeoCortex, which uh, was more compatible with modern web, br web browsers like Chrome. Um, and also compliant in uh, certain um, accessibility systems. Um, next slide, it's, uh, this is the link to uh, the county's uh, web page. Um, what I'm going to do now is just switch over. You can also um, easily access this um, by typing in Perth County GIS into Google, and you'll come up to this uh, page, which uh, catalogs all of uh, Perth County's current interactive or digital maps that we are hosting, along with a library of PDF maps as well. Um, I'm going to, if you were to click on this, I've already got it loaded just for uh, time's sake, uh, but if you were to click on this, it would launch a new tab in your browser uh, and you get a splash screen uh, for showing Perth County and it would show that it was loading. And then you get this, and again, this I'm sorry, this is public facing information. So everything that you see here tonight is what is available to the public. 
Uh, so you get this disclaimer that you have to agree to before you can proceed. Um, once that loads, uh, the automatic scale that, uh, that comes up is to Perth County, and you can see the neighboring municipalities around us. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just go through some of the key uh, sections of this interface that will help you navigate through various uh, tasks. And then what we could do is run a, um, a, I'll call it a simulation, for lack of a better word, uh, to just sort of walk you through how you could do some, use some of the tools to do a search. So first of all, on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, this bar uh, table of contents, whatever you want to call it, and it contains the layers. And these layers are all of the displayed information that's available uh, in this web platform. Uh, some of them are, they're um, grouped into uh, to different, well, groupings. And uh, if you see this plus sign next to them on the, on the very left-hand side, you can actually expand it and we'll show you more information that is uh, located within those. So we've tried to group these into logical, uh, logical sense um, themes. Um, you can expand various, uh, open them up. As you, as you start opening them, you'll see that you're starting to force things down the page. So it's always a good idea to kind of keep track uh, as you're moving along. Uh, in addition to that, next to them, you have these check boxes. Some of them are turned on and some of them are turned off. Um, anything that is turned on, that means that it is available for viewing. Uh, so I'm going to go back to this community uh, grouping. I'm going to expand it. And within there, you'll see that there are two layers, community facilities and points of interest. They're both checked, but we can't see anything on the screen right now uh, on the map. That's because if you see this grayed area that the font is in uh, gray italics, what that means right now is currently this is not visible because it is outside of the viewable scale. And that's done <clears throat> for the purpose of, if you were to load this map and all of these things were to be turned on at the same time, uh, you wouldn't be able to see very much. It would just kind of be a, a, a mass of information. So there are scales, uh, limits that are set on certain things, and uh, uh, you'll, you'll see them more in the, the next the next step. I, one thing I do want to point out is at the very bottom, you'll see that the base maps are already uh, automatically expanded. And then in there, you'll see various um, aerial imageries that are available. So that's air photos of the County of Perth. Um, I would recommend not activating any of these until you've, uh, until you've zoomed in to a, a certain extent. And that's just because this is a very, these layers are very, um, there's a lot of data, they're, they're, they're very rich. And we just don't want um, systems slowing down because of uh, you know the bandwidth, uh, it's trying to uh, load an entire image. So it's just recommended to, uh, to keep it turned off until you zoom in a little bit. Um, speaking of zooming, um, and not in Zoom meetings, um, you can see uh, up here, right below the Perth County Manor, there is a series of tabs, and within each of these tabs, there are button tools that are in there. Right now, you can't see anything. What You just see the icons. You don't know what they mean. Uh, in a recent update of the system, they have added this tool that's on the, uh, the toolbar label on the right-hand side. My apologies. I'm, I'm kind of going from one side to the other. Um, if you click that button on, you'll see that it readjusts and now these buttons have their, it takes up a little more space, but then you'll see what each of the buttons is, the description. You can also hover over it and it, it will also give you a little uh, information uh, pop-up as to what the intent of it is. So until, until you become really familiar with each of these buttons, uh, you can always just turn them, turn them on as soon as the system loads. Um, so zooming in and out of this map, there's a couple of ways of doing that through the navigation tools. 
um, first of all, automatically by default, if you click and hold your mouse on the map, you can pan across just left and right, up and down, uh, just automatically that by that, and then release, and it will it will stay in that uh, location. Uh, another way is if you were to use these plus and minus signs, these zoom in, and you can do that, and they zoom in center of the map. So what's ever in your viewable screen, it will zoom in on that center. And we keep going, and then I can zoom out if I want. Um, <clears throat> another uh, way of doing this, and this is probably something a lot of people are familiar with, uh, especially with uh, the Google map, with Google uh, Maps, is you can move your cursor around. And so say for instance here, I'm going to go uh, just over here and that's Moncton. And I'm gonna hover over Moncton. Now it's not center, but if I use my scroll wheel on my mouse and move it upwards, you can see that it actually starts to zoom in on that area specifically. I can click and hold and now pull it center. At the same time, as I moved in, now suddenly, uh, as I was talking about these community centers and community facility icons, now they, they are uh, in black type, uh, which means they're active, and you can, um, <clears throat> you can see some icons on there. Uh, so at this point now, I think I'm going to start as, as if this was a, a uh, an exercise that uh, we're looking for a particular property for a certain planning application. Uh, I'm at this point right now, so I'm zoomed into Moncton. Um, I could zoom out if I want, or I could just hit under the navigation, there's this initial view. But what that is, is that's like a reset button, which will launch you back to the beginning. So you're at the beginning scale again. So rather than trying to zoom around and, and get back to the same scale, you can just reset it back to the beginning. So as I said, <clears throat> we're going to do this, uh, this search for a property for, uh, for an application for planning. Uh, if you go to the search and identify, um, there's various buttons, that tools that you can use to search certain things. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use the search a civic address. So if I activate that, I'm going to get this pop-up window that asks me for input. And I'm going to start typing. And in this case, I'm going to go 3-3, three, three, nothing is happening. As soon as I hit the third character, that's the minimum requirement for a search. Spaces also count as a character. So I'm going to type in 330. And then we get an automatic pop-up of all of the addresses. And just to be clear, this is these are addresses that Perth County manages. Um, so it's not related to to Google Street or Google Maps or anything. This is this is the Perth County data set. Uh, so I find Wallace Avenue North. So I'm going to autofill that and I'm going to hit OK. <clears throat> and it'll take a minute and it automatically zooms us into this location. Um, the left-hand side, you'll see that it's changed. We've just run a query, so that comes up with the results. You've got um, this information of 330 Wallace Avenue, and you'll notice that there's a, a uh, arrow that we can click to view some more information on it, any details. And it doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. Uh, so in that case, we'll get more information on this later. Uh, you can close that out. X that, it'll, it'll end the query. So now we're in the area that, that we're interested in looking at. Um, again, as I was pointing out earlier, how these icons become available. So we're looking at certain things and I can see this looks like, well, police shield. So it's probably a police station. Um, this, I'm not quite sure what that is. So there's various ways to get information. One is as the layers become active, uh, in their visibility range, you'll see this little, uh, it, I don't really know how to describe it, but it looks like some geometric shapes with some lines. That means that there's a legend available, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can expand that and you can scroll down and find what the appropriate uh, icon is. So in one case, yes, it was a police station. 
Uh, the other one, it's a government facility. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but I want more information on this. I, I really want to dig into it. So one of the other options is you can use this tool, which is called Identify. And once you activate that, um, <clears throat> you can click. Looks like my system is lagging a little bit, so this may not. Um, so I'm going to click on the, the location and hopefully I'll get some results. I may have to reload the, uh, the system. My apologies. Um, yes, it looks like we're Normally, yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, starting to get some uh, broken images here. So I'm just going to shut this session down and I'm just going to restart it again from, <clears throat> from the same location. And it looks as if the system is broken. Try this again. My apologies. Um, what what I can describe is um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the age of technology. Eh? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Bert County GIS. Uh, so the identify button allows you to uh, specifically click on information and then it will pull up um, any of the, uh, the point information that we have in that area. Um, my apologies, but it looks as if my system is not allowing connection to this anymore. Um, Yeah, it is, it is running. Um, let me try one more thing. If, uh, if I can't get this working, um, I may have to uh, defer because it's really not interesting if you just listen to me describing things. <laughs> uh, so I'll try one more thing and see what happens. And um, we can go from there. Yeah, even that is down. Hmm. I don't think uh, I don't think the county was slated for an upgrade tonight. Um, Hi, Gary. Yes, it is working here. Yeah, because I can load it on my machine at the mayor's uh, desk. Here. Okay. okay, that is excellent. I'm glad to hear that that's working for everybody there. I'm trying it in a different um, a different web browser to see what happens here. Maybe I can get it up and running here, and then we can keep moving forward. Um, my apologies. <clears throat> here. Um, so yeah, so the identify tool, that's, uh, that's one way of uh, pulling up some information uh, that you can uh, look at. Oops. It's even not, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I think my connection is uh, being disrupted somehow. Um, my apologies. Um, if you would like, I could go through and just um, um, maybe uh, I can pull up my notes on screen and we can take a, just take a look at them as we go through there. 
if that's acceptable or if you'd like i could we could certainly reschedule for uh, another meeting um it, i i'm not sure what to do in this uh in this uh situation right now hi gary um why don't i share my screen and we'll see maybe you can see it and tell me okay what, i'll try to be your guinea pig actually that would be great thank you thank you mayor todd i appreciate we'll give that it a try we'll give it a try okay all right. <clears throat> Let's see. Excellent. Okay, perfect. I can see your screen now. Just have to do a little uh, re real estate adjustment here. <clears throat> um, okay, so excellent. So yes, if you click on that, and you'll see that you get that uh, yellow bar uh, up here at the top of the map, um, that indicates that you do have a tool active. So um, Mayor Kaysenberg, if you want to click on the police uh, shield and just to see what happens. So um, sometimes you've got to get it right on. Um, one of them you can see there is you get an assessment parcel, um, the community facilities. So if you expand it with that arrow, that's correct, right there, it'll tell you a little bit of information about uh, what is there. So we, we know it's an OPP uh, police station there. Excellent. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out is yet yeah, if you can uh, click that arrow back again, correct? And if you want to, under the identify results, you'll see that there's the X on the left hand or the right hand side. That will just sh shut down the, sh the search. So if you scroll down now, you'll see planning. And that is unchecked at this point. Um, if you want to Click the, yep, turn it on, please, and expand it with the plus sign. And if you could turn on zoning. So this is probably something of interest to a lot, is that what is what is this area zoned as? So we can see that it is uh, gray and it has the uh, acronym of IN. So what does that mean? Um, so if you wanted to click on the zoning section, exactly. So you can see that that highlight right there was C1. So it's a commercial downtown area. Um, and this will happen every time you click a polygon and anything that's identifiable or visible in that range will show up. So in this case, um, the zoning for this one is uh, institutional, excellent. Uh, if you could also now just using the uh, arrow that's on the left-hand side to go back again, we're going to go back to the layer system, uh, and if you want to close that out, perfect. And you'll see across from the planning, there, there's a slider bar, um, <clears throat> which is, uh, yep, that one right there, perfect. Uh, if you start to click and move it, you'll, you'll adjust the transparency. And this allows you to see through the different layers. Uh, where this comes in handy is if you could now turn on the 2015 aerial imagery. And what this will allow you to do is it sets it to a transparent. Um, so if Mayor Todd, if you could just move down, you see where base maps are, and then you see 2015 aerial imagery. So just click that radio button and now it's going to load. So you can actually see through the layers and um, more, more identifiable features that occur underneath there. So um, I think that's a very useful, you know, it gives it in context as well as what is the zoning in that, uh, in that area. So um, the next part could be a little tricky here, um, but if you're, if you're game for it, uh, Mayor Todd, maybe we could, uh, try and proceed on with it. Uh, so if you could uh, turn off, if you go to the zone uh, planning and zoning and turn that off, we'll leave the aerial imagery on. 
Excellent. And if you could zoom in a little bit closer to the um, to the uh, North Perth um, Municipal Office. So right now, what's happening is you're still you still have your uh, your identify tool active because the yellow bar is uh, is turned on. So if you click that X in there, yep, you'll deactivate it, and now you can do your pan and zoom around. Excellent. Yeah. And now if you just want to zoom in a little closer, <laughs> I guess this is a good way of, uh, of sort of learning a new system, right? Uh, so we're looking at this building and maybe um, a building official wants to know what's the, um, what is the, uh, the, the footprint size of this, uh, of this building. If you go to the tab that says draw and measure, and on almost directly be beneath the tab title, you'll see that there are two options. Uh, the other one, which is if you wanna go to distance. All right, and if you click that, the drop down arrow, it will give you, uh, yeah, that one. Uh, it'll give you two options. So you can measure a line or you can even measure an area if you'd like. So if you click the area, it's gonna open up a new uh, window for us. And again, you'll see that that yellow bar has come up and um, it indicates to us that that is the active tool. Uh, and as well, you'll see that there's two sets of measurements. There's, and they're both def they both default into meters. Um, what this is, is you can mix and match. If you click one of the drop down arrows on those uh, measurements. Yep, exactly. You can change it to different things. If you want to measure it a distance in nautical miles, you can do that. Uh, so let's say, uh, why don't we measure this one in feet? Excellent. And we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the um, um, area calculation in meters squared. So now, if you could just pick a point somewhere and click one single click, and then you're going to start your drawing. Excellent. Now, as you see that that line gets drawn out, you can, every time you want to change direction or put in a point, you do a single click. And what that does is you'll see now that um, the uh, area or the, the length is now showing up on this. This is a really handy tool, especially for uh, roofing companies. They can do a quick little calculation as to, you know, what's the average size. Now, if you could double click and you'll finish the drawing Excellent. And now you'll see that it gives you the measurements on all, all sides uh, uh, with the labels. And then overall, it gives you the perimeter as well as the, um, as well as the uh, area calculation. So now we've made a mistake. Oh, we wanted it in uh, feet square, the area in uh, square footage. So if you go up, yep, exactly, and square feet, and you'll see that it dynamically changes the, um, the calculation uh, to square feet. So you can mix and match things um, in, in certain ways. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very useful tool, I think. Uh, it's very simple as well to do, excuse me, a, uh, a length measurement. So Mayor Todd, you have created a map or you've created this and you wanna have a map now to, uh, for later reference. So if you could just click in the yellow bar to close down that tool again, you can also deactivate a tool by clicking on it again in the toolbar. And if you could now go to the print option, which is excellent, yep. So what you're gonna see here, and maybe if you could uh, just zoom out a little bit, because we're in pretty tight there, zoom out. Excellent, so what you see now is this um, red square that appears. Uh, what that is, is that's the printable area on the map uh, that is set to eight and a half by 11 landscape. So on the, on the left-hand side, it shows all of our printing uh, information. So we've got, it's set to eight and a half by 11 landscape. It's going to be a PDF. Uh, the other option is JPEG. And then there are three various resolutions. Um, we'll keep it at the lowest, which is 96 dots per inch. You could also do 150 or 300. Um, and you can also enter your title in at this point as well. So if you wanted to call it a roof calculation or a municipal, yeah, 
The nice thing about this as well is uh, the title also has spelling uh, spell check on it right there. <laughs> so if you make a spelling mistake, you can always go back and correct it just by right clicking on it like anything else. Uh, the last one now, we've uh, we've set up this map and we can see that the center doesn't really have our point of interest on it. So. Um, Mayor Todd, if you could just point and click somewhere on the map and try and move that, try and center that calculation into the middle of the square, please. So you see what's happening here is you're moving the whole image. If you wanted to readjust after the fact, if you go down to that checkbox that says lock print preview with map and unclick that, now you can start to move that under that image um, independently and center it up as you would like. Exactly. And if you want to zoom in a little bit, you can even do that as well to really tighten up on it. And you can see the, the, uh, the whole, uh, we'll have to move over a little bit as well. Perfect. All right. So now if you hit print, it'll take a minute. And what this is doing now is this is going to generate your print document. You can open your file and it will open a new tab for you. And it shows you everything that you just created with the calculations. Um, anything that is active or turned on in the lead in the uh, that layers list is going to show up in your legend. And unfortunately, there's only a limited amount of space. So you can see that it's taken up with just community facilities and points of interest, it's pretty much taken up the entire area. And that's just a limitation of uh, the available space. Um, if you could scroll down just a little bit on that image, uh, perfect. So you'll notice too at the bottom, there is the date that is automatically added. And that's like a timestamp for us. It cannot be altered uh, within the program. So if a member of the public does create a map, we will know the date that it was created, um, just, just for our own reference. Um, at this point now, it's a virtual map. If you wanted to save it or print it, you could do, you could do that just in the regular way of um, using, um, yeah, exactly. You could download it and save it as a PDF or you could print it directly from uh, Chrome. So if you could go back to, yep, yeah, perfect, thank you. Uh, the last bit, and if you could just, you can just X, uh, close out the printing map. Um, exactly. Um, and if you wanted to close those as well. And if you could zoom out a little bit, uh, probably, yeah, to see, uh, excellent, to see the hospital. So the last uh, tool that I wanted to show you is... Um, this is a, I, I find it very handy myself, and I know some of the planning department as well as the public works have used this quite a bit. If you go to the search and identify tab, uh, Mayor Todd, and at the very end of that toolbar, you will see it says Google Street View. If you click that, what, what's going to happen is you're now going to get a split screen, and this is where real estate becomes very valuable on your on your image. You'll see right at the center, there's a tab. You can kind of readjust how that split screen looks. Exactly. You just click and hold it, and you can readjust. That's it. And you'll see here that you, at the bottom, which is Google Street View, which it's tapping right into Google Street View. You can pan and move around just like you do in Street View. Um, but at the top on our map, our bird's eye view, you see there's a dot in the center and it has a little arrow or a beak or a hat, whatever you want to call it. As you're moving the Google image around, you'll notice that that is your point of view. That is where you are looking. So we're looking directly at the hospital right now and yep, we're moving and it'll move as you, as you start to move around as well. Um, if you wanted to drop it in a different location, if you didn't want to drive, so you've just driven right off the <laughs> right off the map, you can keep moving around if you'd like. Or um, on the uh, Google Street View panel, you'll see there's the toolbar 
on your top right hand. If you hit the crosshairs, that'll recenter you. Um, it'll recenter. Yeah, that's it right there. It'll recenter the image for you, and it brings that back in. So if you ever get lost, you can always um, do that. Uh, Mayor Todd, if you could hover over the uh, the the representation of where you are right now, click and hold, and try and drop it to the east where the um, the swimming pool is. There looks like there's a playground there. So if you click and hold that and then drag, exactly, hopefully this one will work. Um, what happens here is because you're far enough away from a road, it doesn't automatically snap to a road. So if you ever do get this, it's not found for this location. It's probably because you're in an area, uh, you know, Google, the Google cars don't drive through fields or forests or things like that. So if you ever run into that situation, it's not that there isn't imagery available for it. It's just that you're too far from the, from the uh, system to snap it to a road. So yeah, perfect. Um, the last thing that I just wanted to show you is you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, well, I'm looking at something and I know that there's not something not quite right. I know that there's something different on this. On the left-hand side of the map, or uh, not on the map, on the Google Street View window, you'll see uh, exactly. So right below the address where it says Listool, Ontario, it says View on Google Maps. If you click that, it's going to open up a Google Map page. And it's the same image that we were just looking at. And down in the right-hand corner, it tells us where the copyright is it tells us where the image or when the image was captured. So we know that this was captured on July 14th. I think maybe we lost Mr. White. I'm not sure. Mr. White's coming back in. My apologies. No worries. Okay. Yeah. We're obviously, we're having a little connectivity connectivity issue tonight. Um, that actually, uh, I that will sum up the uh, the presentation. So. Um, I did have another slide, but I won't worry about coming back to that. Um, who uses this? Um, who uses this system? As I alluded to, planning uses it. Public Works uses it. We've um, we've uh, had um, members of the public have reached out um, with feedback, saying uh, things are correct or incorrect, and uh, it's just I find it's a very useful tool, especially. Um, emergency services as well, Bell 911 and Stratford Fire specifically, I had worked with them in order to uh, get some of the information uh, so that they could use it as well. So that pretty much wraps up this presentation. I would, um, while we've only scratched the surface and we had a little bit of technical difficulty, um, I hope this gives you a start as to exploring what, what kind of, um, useful information this can provide you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, once again, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Mr. White. It was fun to be uh, your partner in crime there. Um, Council, any questions, uh, comments? Councillor Richardson first. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, thanks, Gary. Uh, great, good presentation. I was just wondering when the aerial imagery will be updated. I just do notice that the timestamps that they have for the imagery seems to go every four or five years. I'm just wondering where 2015 was the last one. Yes. Uh, when is that going to be 2020? Uh, through the mayor. Um, we, uh, the County of Perth has uh, embarked on a uh, project called SWOOP, 
and that stands for Southwestern Ontario Orthophoto Project. That's a mouthful. And um, that is a five-year cycle with the uh, partnership of the province, and we are going to be expecting our SWOOP 2020 imagery um, early, late spring, early summer. So we did sign on last year, and we were supposed to get it um, in, I think, Q4 of last year of uh, 2020, but obviously with with uh, COVID and delays, it was pushed back. But we've uh, received some correspondence from the Ministry, uh, from the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forests, and they have told us that it will be coming within the next few months. And once we get that, it will be uploaded probably fairly quickly uh, to, to this system. So we will have some updated imagery. Councillor John, next, Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mayor Todd, and a great presentation, Gary. Just a question from the farming community is, could we use this to help determine drainage, which way drainage is gonna flow and, uh, and uh, drainage tables and stuff like that? Um, through the mayor, there is uh, drainage information as part of the uh, topography uh, layer. Um, it is, uh, sorry, not topography, topology layer, my. <laughs> um, so we do have the drains and the water systems on there. Um, one of the things, and I think that this will come out with the new official plan is we're going to be loading uh, some of the more, more information, including um, the uh, source water protection uh, and things like that. Um, once we get a refresh of the data, um, does uh, uh, does that answer your question? Yes, that helps quite a bit. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. okay if we're not seeing others at this time. Um, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Oh, Councilor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and uh, welcome, Gary. Appreciate the uh, presentation. As always, uh, uh, technology. Uh, is our friend and sometimes uh, not as close a friend as we like to have uh, always right by our side, but uh, that was good. Uh, so again, in the start of your presentation, you meant, mentioned specifically is that what you're showing council here tonight is the public viewing uh, facing side. Do you wanna just talk to council so uh, we're all aware that there's the internal side, which uh, not only county staff, but our local staff are using as well. Do you wanna just talk briefly about that? Don't show us anything, but just mm. tell us briefly about that. Thank you. Uh, through the mayor, uh, yes. So as uh, Councillor Rothwell said, this was the public facing uh, system. Uh, and we, we have developed for uh, the four member municipalities as well as um, uh, the county uh, various uh, interfaces or different versions of this. Um, what you would see differently are a lot more infrastructure information. Um, one of the things that I did talk to you about, uh, one of the usages as our public works department uh, does the retro reflectivity uh, study every year. And that comes to me and we upload this to the system internally uh, so that public works can always go back and revisit some of these locations. Um, it does have, uh, landowner, uh, more landowner information. Uh, but again, under, uh, under our current contract, we cannot give that information out. So it is protected. Um, and just various things, um, that, you know, the general public probably wouldn't be interested in anyways. Uh, so yeah, so that being said, it is secured um, with passwords and uh, logins, and we keep track of all of that. So um and uh, we're also working on like developing some some custom tools as well. Like, uh, uh, for instance, uh, internal staff can do their own uh, mailing lists if they're interested in that. They can generate uh, a mailing list uh, for various reasons. Uh, so those are just some of the things that we've developed uh, uh, for uh, for staff to help them with their day to day work as well. Thank you. 
Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, I think, you know, Council, if you have further questions about this matter, I'm sure that Mr. White would be glad to answer them and uh, we'll make his, his coordinates available to you in the aftermath because often with technology demonstrations, you go and try something and then it's like, oh, I'm not sure. But Mr. White, I'm sure will be help, helpful as, as he was with me and, and being my, my pilot. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time tonight, uh, Mr. White, and uh, thank you for the good work that you're doing. Uh, we look forward to uh, lots of fruit coming from that. So much appreciated. Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay, Council, we're gonna move on to item five on our agenda, reports from departments and key staff. Uh, tonight we have no report from the CAO, uh, but uh, you can be assured that uh, he's been working hard the last few days. Oh my goodness, he and I have been busy. Um, all right, uh, next up is item 5.2, uh, reports from the clerk's department. And uh, I guess renumbered our item 5.2.1 is uh, council is provided with a report from the clerk that offers possible changes to our approach for the next municipal election scheduled for the fall of 2022. This is gonna take some uh, talk through, so I'm going to uh, adjust my settings and Mr. Fairfelt is going to give us the overview. Hold on, please. Mayor Kaysenberg and Council, I have prepared this report for information and discussion. I am not going to read my report, but highlight just a few areas. Section 223 of the Municipal Act states, electors in a municipality may present a petition to Council asking the Council to pass a bylaw dividing or redividing the municipalities into wards or dissolving the existing wards. I have not been in receipt of any comments or requests from the residents or councils cons or council concerning the existing wards. In 2013, North Perth Council did receive a request and no changes were made at that time. I am bringing this report at this time to council ma mainly for awareness and in accordance with the Municipal Act, the process to make any changes is very regulated and time consuming. As stated in my report, I feel Council has four options. The first one, status quo. The second being moving to an election at large. The third, community engagement before any decision being made by North Perth Council. And fourth, retaining a consultant for a boundary review. I have had conversation with CAO Snell regarding a concern that any, any decision of Council results in a hearing before LPAT Council may not meet the deadline for the 2022 election. My first response was that if that was to happen, North Perth would then be well prepared for the next municip municipal election in 2026. However, in speaking with a consultant, he agreed the timelines are tight, but is led to believe that LPAT is prepared and may move these hearings along quicker to meet the municipal election January date. You will note, I did not recommend an option as I feel that this is council's discussion based on what they are hearing from their constituents. At this time, I would be happy to answer any questions of council at this time. Okay, thank you, Clerk Bearfelts. Um, I think where we sit is um, yeah, we're in the earliest stages of consideration here as the clerk has portrayed this matter. And uh, so I think we'd be wise to uh, begin with any questions of, of matters of fact that might be of interest to members of council at this point in time uh, before we uh, dig a little deeper. Um, I, let's have uh, speakers identify themselves in their list for preference. So who do we have up first? Sir Johnston is first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thanks, Pat. Um, Pat, a question is, can we have a mix of maintaining the wards and electing more than just the mayor and deputy mayor from at large? I'm just going to adjust the AV so Pat can respond to that. Okay. 
so just being clear, um, Councillor Johnson, is that maintaining the wards, but allowing all constituency ability to vote for everyone at large. Is, is that your question? No, my question no. would be is could we elect a county councillor from at large and potentially like one other councillor, but also elect one from Listwell, Elma and Wallace as well. To represent the wards. So I personally, I just feel that that's uh, would be part of your, your review and the um, reaching out to a consultant for their advice as to exactly how that would, would happen. Um, I'm not going to venture. I'm not an expert on, on how that would happen. I'm seeing a council at large being one that all constituents would have an opportunity to vote all members of council um, at the same time. So I'm not sure when your divisions are coming in like that, I'm not really certain as to how to, to answer that question. For instance, I've often thought that based on population, maybe the municipality should be split in four, allowing an urban rural mix. So for instance, dividing, and this is just a for instance, that making a division at the traffic lights in downtown Listowel and moving it out. And then therefore you would vote um, at large for representations for those four wards, as well as uh, deputy mayor at large and the mayor at large. And I think if council wanted to consider your county council rep at that time, again, that would be part of the considerations. I, I, I'm not sure um, with regards to that last question, I, I seem to remember some revisions around the uh, municipal act and elections that suggested that you can't have a, that hybrid thing happening. So you can't have um, award based elections plus have some at large councillors that sit in addition to the mayor and deputy mayor. But um, I think we probably need some more information from experts on that before we firm our thinking up on that one. I just recall reading that, that the province wasn't allowing that hybrid solution. Councillor Richardson is next. Excuse me. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I honestly think that option three is the best way to go, that if uh, this has been a while since 2013, the last time that it reared, reared its head, uh, we've had an awful influx of people into the town. Not awful, but an awful lot of influx of people. But I do believe that it needs to go for public engagement in order to get their opinion. Uh, only for the reason that I've been a very large proponent of at-large voting. <coughs> Excuse me. My apologies. Um, that I think that uh, the time has come to have the conversation again and go to at-large now because I don't know if really adding another ward to the mix is going to ease any confusion that exists with the electoral base today. Because right now, um, even though we're getting bigger all the time, everybody knows almost everybody or knows somebody from that area. Um, but I honestly think that we're still small enough that we could easily be at large. And I don't think we need to confuse things because I'm sure every single one sitting around this table tonight has had a conversation. Oh, I can't vote for you or, oh, I can't vote for that person. Um, just because you either know them they live in Elma Ward, but they live in Listwell, um, you're good friends or whatever, or vice versa, back and forth. You mean I can't vote for someone in Elma? People still don't understand it now with only three. Four is going to make it worse. And given the amount of voter, voter turnout that we have consistently with any municipal election, regardless of what the process is for actually casting a ballot, um, I think we want to make it as streamlined and as possible. So I'm in favor of at least seeing what the public thinks. They're the, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are electing the representatives. I don't honestly think that it's, ultimately it's a decision of council, but ultimately it's a decision of the voting public for what they want to have happen. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Richardson. I don't know what the, the video was doing to you, but you were looking like uh, you belong to the blue band troop. Hey, um, Councillor Seiler is next. Uh, 
Thank you, Mayor Todd. I guess uh, I can maybe echo what Matt Council Richardson has just said. I guess what I hear out there is that uh, when you're doing your, your rounds running for council is that how come, how come, how come uh, he can run in, in, in Alma and I can't vote for him. I, my tax dollars go to North Perth and he's making decisions on, on based on what for everybody. So I feel that it's very important that uh, every taxpayer ratepayer in North Perth is able to vote for whoever is running for office in our municipalities. So if that's number three, that covers that, but that's the basic uh, comments that I get when I'm out there campaigning. So it's, I feel that everybody should be able to, uh, in our municipality, vote for who's ever running in, in our municipality. Thank you. Councillor Rothwell is next. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd, and thanks for the previous comments. Uh, uh, Pat, my question is, uh, and thanks for the reports. Uh, my question is specifically uh, regarding uh, item four, is to procure the services of consultant only on the basis that uh, they would be uh, retained to look at ward boundary changes? Is that the only reason we would go to consultant? Moving to the consultant could be actually a, a two or a three part um, project for them. First would be the, the ward boundaries, as well as we could look at uh, council compensation, as well as comp council composition. There are various things that, um, depending on how much council wanted done, um, they would be willing to do as little or all of that. Uh, supplementary. The uh, well, there's two issues there. One, you just said about council compensation. I thought we had a consultant already looking at that and the public involvement on that. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. But it could be all part of the conversation. Okay. As, uh, as we learn all of that. Right. Uh, so just to put my card on the table here, I, I certainly believe uh, in uh, what some others have mentioned in terms of uh, perhaps looking at option two election at large. Uh, I think uh, the time has come for us to, to really uh, uh, investigate that. My understanding is within Perth County, there's only one municipality that's uh, done away with uh, wards, and that's Perth South. Uh, I don't believe any of the other municipalities have, uh, have moved away at least this time, and whether they're considering them, I'm sure they're probably looking at them at the same time as we are. Uh, but uh, I'd be in favor of election at large, and uh, then the question always uh, is, uh, and I agree with... Uh, what Councillor Richardson said with respect to public engagement. I think that's a crucial part. So thanks very much. Councillor Behrens is next. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. And it's not that I disagree with any of the comments, but, you know, we do have a democratic system here in Canada. Both our federal and provincial governments believe in award system for fair representation. And I realize that many believe that they can represent the concerns of all of the municipality. And I realize that everyone does make decisions for all of the municipality. But I have a real concern about um, not celebrating the differences between urban and rural and trying to eliminate them. And the truth of the matter is, in, in this day and age, we should be celebrating differences and recon recognizing diversity instead of trying to hide it. Um, I am in favor of some sort of ward system. I'm not saying that it has to be um, what was signed at amalgamation. My concern here ultimately is that in all honesty, this is a far reaching conversation that involves many things, including the number of representatives, the compensation, the requirements of a counselor's time um, to sit on the boards, things like that. Like it's, it's not just a ward boundary conversation. It's very extensive and at some point intimate about what is going to happen with our municipality. My concern is that 
I really don't think that we can do everything um, and get it in front of LPAT in time for the next election. I'm not saying not have the conversation, but I'm saying I don't believe good decisions come from being rushed to make a decision. And I feel right now, shoot, we're halfway, you know, we're at the end of April and you want us to have a decision by January. And we've just, the a uh, couple of the speakers before me have suggested a number of things that we have to check out already and we haven't even had the conversation. Um, so it's not that I truly believe we can take a look at it, but I'm not convinced that it needs to be rushed in any way, shape or form. Yes, it's important to get the public opinion, but the public already gave us their opinion two years ago. So it's not that we can't make the decision, um, but I do think you might want to go to the public a couple of times, not just once. Because I don't want to send a survey out there, especially at this time of year, where everything's beginning to be busy for the agricultural community. And with what, you know, 257 people say, that's what we're going to do. Um, I don't think that's a matter of fairness either. But I guess ultimately when I get back to all of it, um, and we've dealt with this issue a number of times, so here's my perspective from it, is what are we if we could identify what we are hoping to make better and fairer for every citizen of North Perth, what is it? Is it we've got too many people on council? Is it we don't have fair representation? What is the ultimate reason or reasons for changing it? Because right now, although um, you know, fairness is very subjective, but right now we know the system that we have, we can change it. And I like the concept of perhaps electing that third member to go to county council at large. I think that's long overdue, but we have to ask what are we changing and why, and then move on from there. But I think this is a conversation that could get us into other areas that is going to take far more than eight months to come to a concise conclusion to get it and approved in front of LPAC. That's my own personal opinion. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, uh, Councillor Barons. Councillor Andreessen is next. Hi, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Todd, this, this is a very important decision. And um, if I could wave a magic wand, I would certainly want to have everyone have a voice in who's representing their elected officials, right, to choose that elected official um, and all of them to sit at the table that we have. Um, but along with that, it's absolutely critical that we have the right kind of representation at the table once the election is done. And um, that representation here in North Perth needs to have um, a flavor of both urban and rural. And I am very concerned that over time, um, and even in the immediate future, um, uh, at-large elections could really, you know, provide such a disadvantage for our rural um, contestants, those who are wanting to be into, you know, going into council, because um, the representation and the number of the population in our rural areas is far, far lower than our urban um, residents. And um, we need to make sure we have both voices heard at these tables. And, and you know, the experience of agriculture needs to be a lived experience. We, and we can all learn. We, we have all great potential of learning different aspects of our municipality. But there's nothing more important than having the lived experience of those in agriculture to bring that information directly to this table. 
And that that's my concern. And that's why, you know, if we could have some kind of hybrid um, ability to have everyone vote for, you know, who they want to see, but also have a ward system where we could have rural and agricultural interests be uh, represented, that would be, you know, the perfect scenario, absolutely. But like you said, Mayor Todd, um, I'm not familiar of that being any ability of that being approved in Ontario. And um, I'm not sure why, I'm, I don't know the, you know, know why, but I think that's just so, so important to have both those interests um, represented at this table. Um, and I, I, I feel very, very strongly about that. The other thing that um, is in this report, and I appreciate the fact that it's important to hear from our constituents and, and to get, you know, to take a survey and all that. And I, I totally appreciate that. The problem comes down to representation once again, even in a survey, because um, even if everyone provided their opinion on that survey, um, urban representation would be far, far higher than agricultural or rural representation. And so again, the voices are, are not fairly represented. And so a decision could be made on, on pure numbers and wouldn't fairly um, represent what the needs of the agricultural community are. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm not really, I'm concerned about what all the options are at this time to make sure that um, we're meeting the needs of the constituents. And I think what Councillor Behrens talked about is the importance of meeting the needs, you know, far beyond the election. And at the end of the day, we had at this table have to be able to represent those needs and the people at this table need to have the knowledge and an ability to, to do so. And um, the choices um, at, at the election need to represent that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Uh, Councillor Anstead is next. Councillor Anstead. Hmm. Have we lost the connection? Yeah. Um, could you be muted, Councillor Anstead? Okay, so we, we have uh, potentially a, a difficulty, an AV difficulty that's just arisen with Councillor Anstead's uh, feed. Okay, so, so Hello? Oh, there we are. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we got you now. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, everyone. I, my mute was off, but I wasn't uh, being heard. So, no, I was just saying uh, thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. Thanks very much, Pat, for the report. A lot of great and uh, helpful information. And obviously, everybody that has spoken tonight has made some very good points. Um, I guess for me, and I don't know if any other councillors share this opinion, there's far too many, I have far too many questions right now to be making any sort of comment on what direction we should go. Obviously, the option to engage the public is obviously something that we must do. I think that's very important. Um, but again, I just go back to the fact that the ward system, and again, I wasn't here during amalgamation, um, but the ward system was chosen at that time for a reason. And I think it was, again, to provide that equal representation. So I think that that does still have some merit. But again, I do want to see what the public has to say. And obviously, I think it was Councillor Rothwell that brought up about the compensation piece and the composition of council. That review is still ongoing. So for me, I think it would be premature to make any sort of decision or recommendation until that process has completed, been completed as well. Um, so again, as of right now, I have far more questions than I have answers. And again, I think that's the whole purpose of this is to get those answers um, brought forward to council and again engaging the public for me is going to be the biggest thing to see where where they want to see this see us go thank you thanks we, I'm glad we got to hear from you uh, next up is Deputy Mayor Kellum 
Yes, uh, thank you through you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, and, and again, Pat, uh, uh, very well written uh, written report. Uh, to all my colleagues, uh, great conversation. Everyone has some valid, valid points. I think a couple that really do stick out with me is uh, obviously, it's been uh, stated many, many times, is the uh, the connection with the constituents and getting their uh, their opinion on it. I like Councillor Barron's idea about, and actually Councillor Anset just uh, uh, briefly touched on it as well, about taking our time. There is no rush for this. We don't need to run it through without uh, doing it right the very first time. I think Pat also mentioned that if it's not ready and we can't make the deadline by rushing in, and if it has to wait until the, the election after this, then so be it. But I think this is a starting point. Uh, we need to reach out and I would like to get things uh, rolling um, as soon as possible, but not rush. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Callum. Does anyone else wish to speak before we go to Councillor Duncan? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, I think everybody knows I, I've been a pretty strong supporter of the ward system ever since I was first elected and we've been through this exercise a couple of times now discussing this and I, I think it's very important like others have said to have the uh, the representation for the rural less populated wards as opposed to potentially all of our elected officials coming from a portion of our municipality that has a larger population which very well could happen in, you know if if we were to go to an at-large system. I've heard the comments numerous times about people saying, you know, that you know, I wish I could vote for you. I, I, I've had numerous people in Wallace Township tell me that because of my rural background and connections to the community. You know, it it, it is what it is. Like I, I think that like Councillor Behrens has said, the whole country is divided up into ward systems so we get proper representation. And I think that's a very important aspect to keep. That being said, I'm definitely willing to go to public engagement and look at this. And I think what we should be doing is preparing the next council to make this decision with all the footwork being done between now and the next electoral time. Thanks. Okay. Any councillor who has not yet had a comment that would like to make one before we go on to second Okay, we're not seeing any. So next up is Councillor Richardson, round two. Thank you again. And if humanly possible, I will make this short. Um, I appreciate everyone else's uh, comments that they've made, uh, all very, very valid points. And from what I made mention of before, I don't want to insinuate in any way that this needs to be rushed. There needs to be due process and everything to go through that if we can't make the deadline to do it for this term, I totally understand that. If we don't have time to, you know, to do it correctly, we won't have time to do it twice. With that said, I would also like to, I've made mention of this when these discussions have come up before, and I totally understand and appreciate and agree with the representation that we get from the different uh, wards that we have in North Perth. But keep in mind that the only time specific wards are actually mentioned as totally separate entities is during election time. The only other time that wards are mentioned independently is either with a water report we're getting from wells and or something with drainage it would show lot and concession i understand what you're saying but for the most part we are even governed at the first my first term of council to say that we are essentially a board of directors for a very large corporation we are spending the money of the ratepayers for the entire municipality of north perth basically wards go out the window after the election because everything is about North Perth top to bottom the best decision at the time for any proposal that's in front of you that's just what I just want everyone to remember that uh, I totally understand it and appreciate it and get it and I agree with it but I think sometimes that I don't think that there's going necessarily going to be any lesser of a communication value or anything because someone doesn't necessarily happen to be from an urban community to be able to 
make sensible decisions. That's why we're elected by the public. But getting public engagement and gauging their appetite, maybe the effort, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. So what? let's get their determination because they're the ones who are basically voting in the entire council by ward, at large, whatever. They're the ones who are putting people in charge of their taxpayers' money. So thank you. Councillor Behrens is next. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you, um, it's probably a comment or question more to Clerk Bearfelt. Um, I agree with being able to do a good portion of the legwork um, and do the investigations and get the answers. But Pat, if I remember correctly, there's also the ability to put a question on the ballot. Um, you know, if we could work our way up to potentially a new a new electoral system for North Perth, even if we didn't get to the final approval, is there still the opportunity to put a question on the ballot regarding um, how our electoral system is working? Yeah, certainly, Councillor Behrens, that, that is uh, a very good, good idea. And further to that, I just wanted to make comment that a conversation like Council's having tonight, which is an excellent conversation, um, needs to happen from time to time. And as in my report, I stated, we have not discussed this since 2013. So what we're hearing tonight, and I personally also do not want to see council rushing into this um, particular decision. I think having the conversation, hearing from the public, hearing from the councillors is, is imperative moving forward. And to have a question on the ballot following these discussions and public engagement would be also a very good idea. Um, again, I think it, it's just good conversation. We should take your time. I'm not here to rush you, but I truly believe that to bring this report to a new council following an election is unfair. And also to leave this report too close to the election is unfair. So I'm bringing just at this time for good conversation and whether decisions made to make a change for 2022 or 2026, I still think it's moving forward in the, the best concerns and for the best reasons for North Perth. Thanks, Clerk Bearfelds. Uh, who's next on the speaker's list? Anyone, Anyone further? Okay, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll offer just very brief comments, not gonna wade too deep into this uh, at this point in time, but I was quite intrigued with Councillor Barron's comment about looking at outcomes. What is the outcome that we want to change with regards to um, this that would warrant us to make a change to our electoral process and system? And uh, I think that it's incumbent on council before we consult the public to have that discussion about outcomes and what we think needs to change. Um, is there something amiss in our current system that is not working for us any longer and that therefore should trigger that change and what would the outcomes that we would look for. And I think that to some degree council has to decide whether we, we can't just look at the positive outcomes. We, as, as Kirk Bearfelds has kind of portrayed in her report, we have to look at the pros and cons here of these outcomes. So um, if I were to uh, suggest an approach forward, it would be that council have another discussion, maybe even a workshop wherein we talk about the outcomes and the assessment of the current system in, in a meaningful way with each other and bring forward a proposal or a series of proposal and options as Clerk Berfeltz has sort of you know, mucked in for us, if you will, um, to the community in engagement as the next step. But uh, I too feel no rush. I think that we wanna do this uh, well and right. And it is intriguing to me the opportunity to put this on as a ballot question in 2022 uh, to uh, to sh you know make a decision at that point. So um, my brief comments. I, I won't say much more except that I think we should be outcomes focused. All right, um, council. We don't have to do anything tonight. Um, uh, if uh, one of you would like to suggest a path forward, uh, we'll, we can 
you know, straw test that, straw poll that, and see where we get. Um, but, you know, what, the one thing we do need to do is receive this report for information. Um, beyond that, we have no specific mandate, but I'd like to hear what your wishes are. Clerk Griffiths, who do we have? Okay, so um, Councillor Richardson next. Thank you again. Uh, just very, very quickly, I still think that and putting it on the ballot, I think, is a great idea, but I think we need to gauge the public's appetite first and foremost. If there's very little interest in doing anything, putting it on the ballot is a little moot to do that. So I think going forward, I like the idea of workshops, more in-depth discussion. There's a lot of elements and facets to this, but I do believe that some sort of public engagement to gauge the appetite of what the public is thinking about what's good, bad, or indifferent about what we're currently experiencing for either representation and or how the process is going right now. And then that gauge of appetite from the public will come back, will determine whether or not it goes on the ballot. I agree with that. But um, so I'm going to recommend uh, option three for public engagement at this point in time, even if it's just for comment com uh, comments from what's the appetite again. Okay, so um, let me just test that with you, uh, Councillor Richardson, so that I understand. Um, you would rather do the public engagement before this council has had an opportunity to think about outcomes and maybe workshop this, or would you rather, would you consider the workshop option? I just wanna make sure I understand. I'll certainly consider the workshop option, but I don't necessarily believe that we need to, and I absolutely, I can retract going to, for public engagement immediately, but I do think we need to in, initiate the public to find out what their appetite is for putting something on the ballot. We need more discussions, more opportunities to go through that. I'm okay with that, but I'm just saying we can't just arbitrarily put it on the ballot without letting them come in to, uh, for the public to say something. So I'm willing to go with more workshops. That's a very good idea. <laughs> Excuse me. But I also think that the public needs to be involved prior to going on the ballot. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Who's next? Okay, uh, Clerk Bearfelds is just giving me um, sort of a factual update. She's saying that um, we could bring in an expert to speak with council and facilitate an appropriate workshop um uh to help us get going on this subject so that we can clear clear clarify our own thoughts i'll find my words yet and um and that could be quite helpful council if council deems it if it, council deems it bad. okay and next is councillor andreessen i think yes yes uh thank you through you mayor todd um, as we continue with these discussions i was wondering if we could also include in our review um about our work um, as councillors with committees and i feel that it might be an opportunity to do review of you know what committees there are what the role of councillors are on those committees um and you know what the representation should be should there be one councillor two councillors do we need to add more committees like i i don't have the answers i'm just saying it just needs to be in my mind reviewed um, I guess one thing to note is that um, it may not, people may not realize how much work we do beyond this meeting um, once a week. There are, are the, our representation of councillors at committees really adds up as well, which is fine, but people don't, may not realize what our work is in, in that. And um, whether there could be other areas that might be needed for councillors to have um, a voice that might be consideration as well. Um, so I think a review of that might be helpful. Thank you. Thanks. And I, I think, um, uh, you know, to, to notion, I don't want to drag council with me, but to the notion of a workshop, the, the ideas that you put on the table that Councillor Behrens has put on the table, these are all themes that we could have unfolded for us in a workshop opportunity. So thank you for building on that, uh, Councillor Andreessen. Who's next? Councillor Rothwell's next. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Todd and uh, Council. The, the uh, question I have is uh, twofold. Well, first, 
I agree uh, with the need for a workshop for council to really spend time and work this uh, through ourselves and answer questions that we have before we go to the public. I think there's a lot of merit in that. The, sec the second, I do have this question for Pat and other staff. What is the expected date that we're going to hear back from the consultant in terms of the compensation and workload review for counselors? Because it was more than just a compensation piece, as I uh, recall from input. Uh, do we have a date so when that's expected to come before council, Pat? Um, I think uh, CAO Snell is with us. He may have the most information about that. CAO Snell, do you feel up to answering that one? My understanding is that the the committee is actually putting together um, their final report presently, and so it should be um, here s soon. My understanding is though it is just dealing with council compens compensation. Thank you. So, but uh, related to that point, uh, to uh, Councillor uh, Andreessen had mentioned this is the the piece uh, regarding workload, and that was uh, covered. I think in terms of the uh, compensation piece, it was more than just a, a dollar amount. It was based on the number of hours and meetings. I think we had as well. So that would help, or at least be a important component part in my mind in terms of council decisions uh, or discussion uh, regarding this issue. Thanks very much. Councillor Behrens? Um, yes, through you, Mayor Todd. I just wanted to say that um, the point that I made about putting a motion or a question on the ballot was if we get to a certain stage and we want to have a question to put to the public or we've gotten to the point where we've decided we are seriously looking at election at large or we are looking at a two or a three or a four ward system, my point about the question on the ballot was that then if we weren't ready to actually change the boundaries, we could, you know, have a somewhat of a confirmation, I suppose, by putting it on the ballot and asking those that actually go out and vote what they thought. Um, personally, I like all the comments that were said, but I really do like your idea of a series of workshops. As everyone has mentioned here tonight, you know, there's the compensation, there's the workload, there's the representation. Um, there are so many variety of issues that if we don't talk about them all and take a moment and talk about them all, we don't need a consultant for those types of things. We may need, um, you know, specialized assistance for what we can and can't do and things like that. But I personally don't believe we're at that stage yet. Um, you know, if we pick a magic number and say we only need seven counselors and then, you know, we go with that and then find out that their workload is so extreme that we should have kept the 10 because the seven are now more expensive than what the 10 ever were type thing because of workload and extra compensation. And that gets back to my original point about, you know, what what is the what is the outcomes we're hoping to achieve by changing anything. So I think I really like the idea of a series of workshops to have you know, a few discussions about some of these major, major issues and then see where we're at. I think that's a great idea. Thanks, Councillor Barnes. Um, anyone else, uh, Kirk Rick else? Okay, it looks, it looks like we're there. So, um, I mean, obviously we have uh, the need for a resolution to receive this report for information. Um, I think I'm hearing enough council um, acceptance of the idea that we organize a one or more workshops amongst council for the purposes of exploring and discussing uh, along themes that have been identified tonight. And, and I don't, I, you know, staff may have to go back to the recording and figure out all the themes that were jotted down. But I think that uh, if we offer that up uh, and then um, uh, bringing that report to council and at that point we could elect other choices we could make other choices, whether we want to go to the public at that point, whether we find ourselves at an impasse. I think it's really premature to, to predict that. 
Um, I will say to Councillor Richardson's point and to the points made by others echoing that, um, I too believe the public needs a say. It's just, we're so early in this process, we should sort out our own thoughts and some of our own approaches before we get there. So uh, would Council uh, consider a resolution then that is um, receive the report for information and agree to initiate one or more workshops for the purposes of evaluating uh, opportunities with regards to electoral change in North Perth. Anyone have a significant objection to that? With a, a understanding, I'm, I'm not, I'm not closing off the idea of public consultation. Just an understanding that we'll deal with that when we get there. Anyone um, wanting to significantly object to that notion? Uh, let us know. And, and we'll ask you for some revisions too. Um, Clerk, Deputy Clerk Beer, how you sort of keeping up with us? I'm hoping she's good. Okay, she is good. I know that. Okay, great. All right. So we have something of a resolution. Uh, the general understanding is um, we are receiving the report for information, and we are agreeing to establish workshops for this council for the purposes of discussing electoral change. Um, can I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would definitely move it and I think it's a great idea. Council needs to come up with a little bit of a game plan before we go to the public. Thank you, uh, Councillor Johnston. Uh, Councillor Richardson, calling on you, would you wanna be the seconder of this one? I will second that, thank you. Thanks, okay. Um, any discussion or debate further? We've, we've popped most of it through at this point, but uh, I'm open to more. We're not seeing anything, so let's have that vote. Rothwell, what say you? I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So that's carried unanimously. And the clerk um, uh, has advised that that was an excellent discussion. So um, thank you all for your participation and, and good ideas. Uh, in this uh, new track that we're embarking on. Okay, let's move to item 5.3 on our agenda. Uh, from the programs department, we don't have a report indicated from our manager of programs tonight. Uh, I know that team has been busy and deserves our ongoing appreciation for all that they do uh, through these pandemic times. Uh, we turn to item 5.4, reports from the Treasury and Finance Department. And tonight, uh, I don't know whether this is going to be a, a volunteer or voluntold, but uh, as item 5.4.1, Council was asked to set up the framework for budget 2022, I believe including selection of councillor leads and authorizing the pre-budget survey and consultations. I believe Ms. Belfour, our deputy treasurer is with us and Lane, welcome Becky. Uh, thank you, Mayor Todd, Todd and council. Uh, before you is a report for the 2022 budget committee. It seems a little early uh, to be talking about the 2022 budget, but uh, we're already uh, reviewing uh, items for the new budget software that is being implemented. And uh, with the capital project ranking that came into play in 2021, uh, there's some um, items within that that I know Council had addressed that maybe we could look at for the 2022 budget to ensure that that whole process uh, was uh, very smooth and um, it was a, a lucrative exercise and it went very well. So that's just something that the committee needs to look at, along with any further changes in process with the new budget software. Uh, just wanted to let Council know that uh, public engagement initiatives uh, were going to be um, um, going through that again and we've set dates of September 1st to September 30th and that information will be provided at the uh, visioning meetings. Uh, last year, uh, we did a public information session, what was, which was completed virtually. It was very well received, and uh, with the unforeseen circumstances, that's the plan again for the 2022 budget process. Um, so, uh, having said that, 
Uh, this is, uh, we get uh, going and we establish our chair and our vice chair. Uh, we'll enhance our team approach uh, to the information that uh, we provide to council for decision-making uh, during the budget process. Uh, so I ask at this time, if we can establish a budget chair and vice chair uh, to be appointed by council to proceed over the budget council meetings. And it is intended that the chair and vice chair will review the proposed agendas with staff prior to the budget meeting for understanding and clarification. Uh, the chair and vice chair do not um, form a separate committee of council, but are appointed to preside over the 2022 budget committee. If council would like to create a 2022 budget committee, that does not include all members of council. Uh, this should be done by council and the committee and would provide minutes, uh, et cetera, for council information. So at this time, if, if you would uh, like to appoint a chair and uh, vice chair and, and move forward, or if you have any questions. Thanks, Ms. Belfour. Um, so we have, yeah, we have a couple of things to talk about here. Uh, Councillor Johnston, I believe we'd like to make some remarks or a question. Uh, thank you, Mayor Todd. And I want to uh, thank Becky for the uh, the report and, and how well the uh, 2021 budget went. And uh, stemming from that, I would like to nominate uh, Councillor Rothwell to be the uh, 2022 budget chair. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. I think there was a, a sense of uh, expectation that uh, that might be the case, given that he was your vice in, in the current year. Um, uh, Councillor Rothwell, would you uh, consider accepting that uh, opportunity? Thanks, uh, Mayor Todd, and I appreciate the uh, uh, comments, and I'd be more than uh, pleased to serve if that's what uh, Council wishes uh, to do, as long as we have uh, uh, Vice Chair to come forward, and I uh, if I am appointed, I'm uh, more than happy to uh, work with our staff to uh, bring forward the budget, which I believe uh, should involve the whole of council as opposed to a separate committee. I think it's crucial for all of council to have input with respect to the budget. Thank you. Thank you. I know, uh, Becky, you kind of dropped that uh, little uh, gem on us that we could create a smaller budget subcommittee, but... Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, too sure about that myself. I think that uh, the process that we've used for the last several years has been quite effective and uh, why mess is good, right? Um, I think it's always been in the reports, just that it is a possibility for council to go that direction, but it never has changed. So I, I, we just put it into in case council would like to make that change. So thank you. Um, would anyone else like to uh, nominate or s volunteer to serve as the chair of the budget committee before we we uh, railroad Councillor Rothwell into this? Very good. Okay, well, let's strike while the iron's hot. I have a resolution that for that one, at least, that reads as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoint Alan Rothwell to be the chair of the 2022 budget committee. Uh, can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for that? I will so move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Anstett, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alan, last chance to, to duck. All right, he's, he's laughing. That's good. We, we, have him, we have him on board. That's good. All right, um, let's have that vote. I am voting in favor of that motion. I just can't vote for some reason. Thank you. Oh, very good, thank you. So that's carried unanimously. Congratulations, Councillor Rothwell. Uh, now you know what comes next, Council, and that is the uh, determination of uh, a budget vice chair. And the, the normal thinking is that that person will serve as the chair in the following year, uh, but that's uh, perhaps a tradition that doesn't always work out, especially since there's an election between uh, now and then. <clears throat> so, um, would a councillor like to volunteer or nominate someone on council for this role? I 
to hear crickets at this point, yes. <laughs> Councillor Andreessen, would you consider a serving as the vice chair? Yes, actually, I'd be very interested in, in um, gaining some experience and uh, serving in that way. So thank you for that uh, yeah, vote of confidence. Thank you. Thank you. We have her on the hook. Does anyone else want to uh, consider this? All right, Be before she gets off the hook, let's uh, let's move this along. Um, can I call on Councillor Rothwell? Let me read the resolution. Uh, the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoint Leanne Andreessen to be the Vice Chair of the 2022 Budget Committee. Um, Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as the mover of that? Enthusiastically, yes. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our seconder for that one? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. It's exciting when uh, when you know it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I don't think there's any need for discussion or debate. Let's just move to the vote and get this done. Uh, let's have that vote. That is unanimously carried. Congratulations, Councillor Andreessen. Uh, next up then, um, Council, I'm, I, I'm just gonna check in with you to see that, that uh, again, I'm not sort of ramming something through that's unexpected. Um, we do have that option of creating a budget subcommittee that is sort of different and less than Council or leaving the budget committee as a of the whole, essentially as a committee of all Council. Um, is there anyone who would favor shrinking this to a, a ad hoc budget committee for 2022. Are we seeing anything, Kirk Bearfelds? Okay, so it's agreed that we'll continue with the process that uh, largely has been used for the last several years with good success, and that all council will serve as the budget committee. Uh, with that, then we have one more resolution which enables uh, the first actions here uh, for our consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the circulation of the public survey with regard to the 2022 budget. Uh, can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Callum, will you serve as our seconder for that? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. I think this might be a good time for just a five minute break, a little recess at this point in time. Um, there's a little bit ahead, but uh, enough that uh, if we needed a, a little personal break, it would be good timing. So let's come back at um, 9.05 for the sake of our argument. See you back here at 9.05.
Councilors, I'll invite you back to the table. Uh, if you haven't uh, returned yet and you hear my voice, please return. Appreciate the brief recess. Um, we're getting there, we're almost through. All right, so uh, let's turn our attention then to item 5.5. Um, report uh, from our manager of environmental services. Item 5.5.1 provides council with information about a procured emergency notification system for our community. Mr. Hackett has wound up being our organizational lead on this initiative and so I'll call on him to offer an introduction to this matter. Mr. Hackett, welcome. We're suddenly realizing that perhaps Mr. Hackett's not with us. Oh, he's on mute. Okay, Mr. Hackett. Sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. Yes, Mayor, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council staff were requested to do some research into an, an emergency notification system and um, repo requests for proposal were, were received in October. Uh, proposals were reviewed by staff and the successful proposal was received by a company called ICE Soft Technologies, they're out of Alberta, and um, for a notification system that they call Voyant Alert. Um, it is a multi-purpose mass notification system that can be used to communicate um, information to all of our residents. And the service can be used for both emergency notifications as well as community engagement communications. And it's cloud-based software, and it can be used through uh, mobile apps, text me messages, email, voice calling, and also social media integrations. Um, it involves self-enrollment by any member of the public of North Perth um, at no charge. There's no personal information requested at the time of registration. Uh, when you register, you can choose which type of notifications you want to receive. And you do this through uh, either applying through uh, downloading an app from Apple App Store or Google Play um, or you can register online for email, text messages, and phone call alerts. Um, there's no usernames or passwords that are required, and the registration takes less than a minute generally to, to go through that process. You can choose which type of alerts you want to receive um, for, which for multiple locations in North Perth. So you could have uh, your home, uh, maybe work, school, child care, uh, or child school or daycare, and um, then you would receive notifications if there was an emergency notification for that area only. There is an information page that I attached and um, there's also a video that I'm gonna ask Pat to play in a minute here um, that will help probably explain it better than I am uh, about how it works. It's, it's a pretty simple thing actually once, it's work, when, once people are signed up for it, it's, it's volunteer. We're planning on launch, launching next week and going live um, and that will coincide with emergency, the Emergency Preparedness Week, which runs from May 2nd uh, to the 8th. And also um, financially, the first year costs include, including the training and the setup were $8,000. And then the municipality has the option to do four more years at, at $7,000 per year for this system. So Pat, if you're ready, if you could um, show the video and then we can maybe answer some questions. Your people rely on you to give them the information they want and need. And now there's a solution to make doing so easier, faster, and smarter. Introducing Voyant Alert, the multi-purpose communication service that supports your community or organization through rapid dissemination of enriched media alerts for both critical emergencies and patients. Keep your people safe and informed with announcements and emergency alerts about fires, floods, road closures, community events, recycling reminders, and... Yeah, Council, we're trying to figure out uh, how to feed the sound into the uh, WebEx stream, so just bear with us uh, at this point. Uh, we might need IT support uh, to figure this out. We're not quite sure how to troubleshoot the, uh, the audio feed into the stream. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if Simon is available. Simon, are you with us somewhere? Can you hear my voice? Well, um, maybe we should turn to questions at this point. And um, anyone have questions? Okay, uh, Simon says he's coming down. Anyone have first questions? And then when we get Simon here and helping us figure it out, we'll uh, proceed. Um, Councilor Rothwell. Rothwell's first. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. And thanks, uh, Mark, for your presentation. Uh, my question was uh, in terms of uh, uh, if this was something that was in our work plan or budget and so on, I think uh, Mark may have or has the answer that uh, probably the rest of the council should hear that uh, that he should probably share in terms of uh, why we're looking at this uh, and from a budget standpoint as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Alan. Um, it, this was brought up from from the mayor through the. Um, under the emergency declaration of direction from the mayor to it to look at this um, different types of emergency notification systems. Thank you. Thank you. Todd, just uh, supplementary to that, if I may. Sure thing, yeah. Uh, so in terms, because this is through the declaration of emergency, is this uh, something that uh, we would be using funds from the uh, uh, pandemic uh, funding we received from the province? Is that the, the pot of money that we'd be looking at? Thank you. That was my expectation all along, yes. And, and this was raised quite early in the pandemic. So um, it's taken a little while to get us to this point, but uh, my expectation is that this would be funded uh, through funds that are available to us for emergency recovery, yes. Thank you, I agree. This is a good program, thank you. So um, our IT wizard, Simon, is, is here with us waving the magic wand, but we're uh, waiting to see what happens here. Your people rely on you to give them the information they want and need. And now there's a solution to make doing so easier, faster, and smarter. Introducing Voyant Alert, the multi-purpose communication service that supports your community or organization through rapid dissemination of enriched media alerts for both critical emergencies and day-to-day -day notifications. Keep your people safe and informed with announcements and emergency alerts about fires, floods, road closures, community events, recycling reminders, and more. While other conventional solutions offer generic text-based information, voice and your people rely on you to give them the information they want and need. And now there's a solution to make doing so easier, faster, and smarter. Introducing Voyant Alert, the multi-purpose communication service that supports your community or organization through rapid dissemination of enriched media alerts for both critical emergencies and day-to-day -day notifications. Keep your people safe and informed with announcements and emergency alerts about fires, floods, road closures, community events, recycling reminders, and more. While other conventional solutions offer generic text-based information, Voyant Alert is different. It provides enriched, visually engaging, and personalized alerts tailored to the recipient. Leverage a wide range of channels to ensure that anyone can receive notifications, including voice to landline. Provide more context in less time and help your recipients make better, more informed decisions by including the distance from and direction of an incident, personalized map directions, important safety information, and even images and rich media. A library of pre-designed templates makes it easy to get information out fast with two to four clicks. Locally administered, you control the content. Increase engagement and reduce message fatigue with targeted messages sent to the right people at the right time by easily defining a precise region to notify with Voyant Alert's advanced geofencing technology and topic groups. 
Reduce confusion and panic during an emergency with contextual alert zones that deploy relevant messaging based on a recipient's proximity to an incident. When in the field, easily initiate alerts from within our mobile admin to quickly send out an emergency alert with only four clicks. Gain real-time insights and critical feedback when you request and receive status updates with two-way communication and recipient response. Utilize team collaboration and recall to increase organizational efficiency. With features that matter, Voyant Alert is the reliable and trusted notification system that helps make your job easier. And you will always be supported. Voyant Alert provides industry-leading support with 24-7, 365 customer service, community registration assistance, and a support portal. Stay alert, stay connected. For more information, request a free demo today. Okay, I, I'm hope, we're hoping that Council got to hear as well as see that. Um, we will provide a link according to Clerk Bearfelt's in the aftermath of the meeting so that if any minister wishes to review the can, they may. And I believe Councillor uh, uh, Aarons has a question. Um, just a, a couple of them through you, Mayor Todd. Um, it says it's going live next week. So did we already sign up for this? That's my first question. And my second question, who actually does the notifications? Is it the municipality of North Perth or, or who does it? Because I could see this being used, you know, for possible tornado warnings to shelter in place to those types of things as well. Um, and I'm just wondering who is actually putting the information into the system and it, are we going to have to dedicate a staff member to do this? Thank you. Yes, I could answer those okay. questions. Um, the, there are about a number of staff, including myself, the clerk, um, Jessica and Jen, Jenny Barons are, have all been trained. We've had two training sessions on how to do uh, the alerts. So it would be one of us that would be involved in putting out uh, an alert. Um, it would, doesn't have to be done through anyone else but the municip by municipal employees and only certain ones have the ability to be able to um, put an alert out. And, um, and we're hoping that we don't have to use it very often, that it's mainly for, uh, it's just an emergency type thing that um, if something comes up, then we, we would be able to get something out. It would be not the only way we would inform people, it's just a tool in our toolkit of how we would make people aware, because it's not mandatory but that it, people are um, signed up for it, but it would be on a voluntary basis. I think, I'm not sure what the other question was, sorry, Julie. Um, just, I guess, Mark, what my question would be is, it mentions in the report that we're going live next week. Did we already sign up for this? Yeah, yes, we have. We went through the request for proposals back in um, October, and it just, with the pandemic, uh, it took a little while to get everything kind of worked out. It was under the budget amount that it, it didn't have to actually come back through council because of, of the low dollar amount. Uh, Councillor Andreessen next. Yes, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, my question is just around um, whether it would be used for severe weather circumstances, um, of course, in a really bad storm, but would it be done as a precaution um, for people, knowing that this is very much a, a snow belt type of region, and if we would include that as part of our service? Thank you. Yeah, some of those decisions are, are yet to be made. I think most most of the weather ones, like things like tornadoes or things like that, they happen so quickly. And and weather, uh, uh, ca the Canadian weather places put out quite a few warnings. That's one of the things that we've thought about is trying to limit the amount we put out because 
Sometimes it's like crying wolf. Um, and, and so we really want to use it only when we have to. We do see it being something that um, where if someone is, uh, if we have a winter storm coming, yes, we could definitely have that. Or if we will open up warming centers and things like that, again, only in emergency type situations would we be using it so that there isn't the um, fatigue from warnings that come that does happen. Some of the other types of uses also that we could use would be through boil water advisories that you get information out very quickly, very targeted areas um, by, based on the water system and things like that. So again, we couldn't just do that. We'd have to go door to door still, but in a situation like that, often getting the word out really quickly is, is um, something that is important to, to ensure people's safety. Thank you. Okay, we're not seeing any other questions at this point. I have a resolution for consideration that uh, reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the emergency notifi notification system report for information. Can I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover for that? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our seconder? I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Let's have that vote. I'm in favor. I got to go back and describe. Thanks, Councillor Johnston. So that's carried. Thank you. Uh, let's turn next. Uh, thanks, Mr. Hackett. Uh, let's turn next to reports from our operations department, item 5.6 on our agenda. As item 5.6.1, council is invited to award a contract to BM Ross and Associates Limited, our vendor of record for environmental engineering, for a servicing master plan. I call on Mr. Couch, our manager of operations, to address this matter. Welcome, Mr. Couch. Thank you, Mayor Todd, members of council. On March 15th, uh, this was brought forward in detail regarding the award of an expanded uh, environmental engineering project, which was the master servicing plan. It was an expansion from a stormwater master plan to uh, the other disciplines of water and wastewater. At the time of the discussion on March 15th, council had asked staff to go back and uh, look for clarification from legal counsel regarding the roster process that was used uh, in that award system and then this specific award as well. So staff did so and uh, council had suggested, uh, legal counsel had suggested a few things. They said the roster process was, was a sound process that went through our procurement system uh, for pre-qualifying pre -qualifying firms. Um, it was a flexible system that did allow and build into it the assigning of additional works and these works were additional and assigned to BM Ross as part of the recommendation. And then finally, that it was uh, an efficient method and a cost-effective method of doing so uh, for securing engineering and professional services by using the pre-qualified uh, vendor, in this case, for environmental engineering. So the recommendation is uh, the identical recommendation that actually was in front of council and financial impacts that they saw previously and it's uh, in front of them again, having uh, sought uh, that opinion. Thank you, Mr. Couch. Any uh, questions or comments on this from council before we consider the resolution? We're not seeing any, so I have a resolution for our consideration. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth award the servicing master plan to BM Ross and Associates in the amount of up to $300,000, not including HST. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for this one? Also move, yes. Thank you. Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. The 
Is that everyone? That's great. Yes, thank you. Okay, that's carried. Thank you. I just lost sight of the, the line there. Um, all right. Uh, next up is uh, item 5.6.2. Council was asked to accept a tender bid from Norjohn Contracting and Paving for various surface chip and seal paving initiatives in North Perth. Again, Mr. Couch, for some comments. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we've joined together with several municipalities, as you can see in the report, for chip and seal work this year. Um, the overall bid process was one that was set out by Morris uh, Turnbury, and um, it did outline $600,000 worth of work, or just under. Um, our sections were listed in the report that we were looking for uh, chip and seal. Uh, again, three different techniques of road rehabilitation. There's reconstruction, full rebuild. There's rehabilitation, just the surface gets replaced, and then there's preservation techniques. This is a seal of, of an emulsion that is covered with a chip. Uh, in, in old days, this was called uh, tar and chip, and that is very much what it is now. Uh, but the sections of roads that it applies to and is successful with are ones that have minor cracking, uh, fine cracking, and are still in good shape in terms of their profile and condition. So uh, those sections are set in front of you after inspection of roads uh, last year and um, the overall work is $163,000. Uh, basically, our portion, and we could award to Norjohn. That work is expected to happen mid to late summer. Thanks, Mr. Couch. Council, any questions or first comments on this one? Councillor Richardson. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Have we done a fair bit uh, Lyndon, good report uh, from Norjohn. Have we done so, a fair bit of stuff with Norjohn before? Do they have a good rating as far as one of our vendors go? They have a good rating for the chip and seal work that's here. There were two companies that were very competitive, as you can see. In speaking to the other municipalities, they've used them frequently, and uh, it's been a successful product. We've used them as well for a fiber mat product, which is a different product than this. Um, depending on how that was applied, it was more successful in some sections than others. So we have direct experience with them. And I'd say they're a, they were a good com company to work with in the past and had provided good warranty response as well on some of their workmanship. This specific product uh, would be new to the municipality as far as I remember using Norajon. But as I said, a reference check was done and uh, they in fact have worked for the other municipalities that we partnered with. Okay, good enough, thank you. Any other questions from Council at this point? No. Okay. Uh, I have a resolution for our consideration that reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth accept the tender of Norjohn Contracting and Paving Limited with the amount of $163,828.80 HST excluded. And I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover for that one. Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mr. Couch. Appreciate all that you're doing. It's a busy season for you. Okay, uh, next uh, we have no reports from the fire department this evening as item 5.7, which brings us to item 6 on our agenda. For item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of our committees? And the usual process, if you'd like to speak, indicate in the chat function. No, okay. Uh, we have received no items of correspondence beyond that already shared in the consent agenda for council's disposition. That brings us to item eight on our agenda, which allows council to consider and enact bylaws. As item 8.1, we have a bylaw authorizing signing of a subdivision agreement with 2459825 Ontario Limited, uh, or sorry, Inc., Ontario Inc., uh, pertaining to lands uh, colloquially known as the Terrier Subdivision. Are there any questions or concerns from councillors before we consider this resolution? Okay, so I have a resolution for our consideration then that 
bylaw number 45-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a subdivision agreement with 245-9825 Ontario Inc. be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for that. Yes, I will move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yeah, I can second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. With that, that's carried. Thank you. Uh, that moves us to agenda item number nine. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? Seeing none, that moves us along to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to the community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? Left to speak, please so indicate in the web chat function and we'll call on you. We'll start with Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as, as very likely very few of you know, June 1st, Tuesday, June 1st is World Milk Day. And this year um, we have a, a radio station in Listowel that is very good at uh, agriculture and very good at uh, um, publicizing things that are local. So for World Milk Day this year, the ranch, uh, Listwell's own uh, radio station, is uh, going to be promoting uh, milk and dairy products uh, that originate a lot in North Perth and how much of a, uh, an economic impact this has in North Perth. So depending on the lockdown situation at that point, if they are allowed, um, Stay tuned for further details, but they are actually hoping to be broadcasting that day live from a dairy barn, actually situated. Um, they will be broadcasting from on top of a milking robot, on top of the robot room that day, and there will be all sorts of uh, draws and prizes and, uh, and interviews and stuff going on that day. So stay tuned, but we're hoping that on World Milk Day, uh, the ranch will be broadcasting live from a dairy barn. Thank you very much, Councillor Johnston. That I, I picked up on that story and was quite excited about it. Uh, you know how much I enjoy uh, visiting cows, so uh, there's an opportunity for me to do so. Um, do cows wear masks when they have visitors out of sheer curiosity? Uh, no, they don't, and they're not afraid to get you dirty either. Oh, well, I'm good with that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Johnston. Do we have anyone else on the list, Clerk uh, Bearfelts? So uh, it looks like uh, we've made the announcement that's uh, important tonight. Uh, that brings us to agenda item number 11. Uh, we have no matters for consideration in a closed session meeting of council tonight. Uh, that allows us to move past agenda item number 12, which is a return and report from a closed session. Didn't have one, nothing to report. Council as a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what's called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft of that here for our consideration and the resolution for it that reads as follows. The bylaw number 46-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the council of the municipality of North Perth be produced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Deputy Mayor Kellum, would you serve as our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in support, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Councillor Ronfwell, and that causes that to be carried. Appreciate that. Councillors, we've completed the deliberations and taken action on the business 
that did come before us tonight before I read a motion to adjourn. Is there any further business? Clerk has asked me to remind all councillors of a meeting public information session Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Ordinance were sent to you for uh, that meeting and uh, uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, any, any further business? Okay. So I have a motion for adjournment that reads as follows. This council meeting adjourns at 9.36 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday, May 3rd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover? I will happily move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? I will gladly second that. Too much enthusiasm for that motion. Uh, Let's have that vote. And we're missing the vote from Councillor Rothwell, who's I'm gladly, in favor. He's I'm glad we with your try today. There we go. So that is carried. This council meeting is adjourned and we will meet again Monday, May 3rd, 2021. Thank you for your participation tonight, council, and have a good night.